All right. So let's look at yet another question on the principle of moments. Okay. So we're we'll taking a third example. So this question here says we should evaluate P for the equilibrium to occur. Okay. So you have this system here. You're asked to find the value of this particular force here, P, for there to be equilibrium in this system. Okay. So how do you solve this? All right. So let's let's get a solution of this. Um, first things first, let me take this off. Um, take this off. All right, so you have this as your question. I will still have something there. All right, so here's your question. Now, to solve this question here, our task now would be to get how many forces we have here. So, how many forces do we have here? We have this one here. So, I have this as number one, I have this as two, 70 Newton. I have this as 3, 50 Newton. I have this as 4, 20 Newton. So I have four forces here. That's your first task. The next thing here would be, if you look at this question here, we said for us to take moment here, that moment is literally force. Moment is force multiplied by perpendicular distance. That's moment, force times perpendicular distance. So in essence, the force must be 90 degree with the distance it is covering. And if you look at that, um, if you look at the P here, P is 90 degrees with the distance there. So P is okay. If you look at 50 Newton there, 50 Newton is also at 90 degrees. That's here with the distance it's covering. And again, if you also look at 20 Newton there, 20 Newton and 70 Newton are not at right angles. So they are not at 90 degrees. 20 Newton is inclined at 30 degrees with the horizontal, while 70 Newton is inclined at 25 degrees to the horizontal. So our first task would be to resolve these forces, all right? So resolve them so that they can now stay perpendicularly with this um, distance here or this beam, okay? So what that means is that I'll resolve 20 Newton to rest vertically. That means you resolve 20 Newton to come this way, all right? So you resolve 20 Newton this way here. That's for this. Also, for the 70 Newton force, which is this one here, this one here, we'll have to resolve this one too to also lie vertically upwards, which will be like this. That's what you do. So, how do we resolve forces? In our previous class on vector resolution, we said if a force, if I have a case where a force, let's say F here, is inclined at an angle theta to the horizontal. We said the horizontal component is given by f cos theta while the vertical component is given by f sin theta so the concept is for me to resolve a force vertically you take that force then take sine of theta so what does that mean it means that for 20 here to resolve this 20 to be vertical right it becomes 20 sine of the angle the angle here is 30 degrees so this force here becomes 20 sine 30. Now this now becomes the vertical force all right which is now at 90 degrees so that's that's what we have for this let's look at the next one there also for this one too resolving this one to lie vertically this also becomes 70 70 sine of the angle which in this case is 25 degrees so 70 sine 25 so we have this that means for this question here the forces i'll be using would be p 50 or 50 newton 70 sine 25 this is a, this should be in newton so 70 sine 25 newton and then also have 20 sine 30 also in newton all right so that that becomes um our forces here all right um okay so i'll just attach newton here newton for this and then Newton for this, all right? So this is not different from what we did earlier. The only difference is that I have to resolve the forces that are inclined, like this one here. I have to resolve it to lie vertically upward, which I've shown you how to do that. Just take the force, then sine of the angle. So we have this, all right? So we now have this now. So we have our forces here. Um, we'll take moment about the um, knife edge, that's this point here, or the fulcrum. Let's label this A, we'll label this point here, A, all right? Let's label this A. So let's say take a moment about A. All right, A is this point here. Um, this point here is your A. All right, so let's let's take moments about A. 
So taking moments, taking moments about A. Now, from the principle of moments, we said the sum of clockwise moments will be equal to the sum of anti-clockwise moments. All right. The sum of clockwise moments is equal to um, the sum of anti-clockwise moments. And if that's true, we'd have to locate which of these moments here are clockwise and which are anti-clockwise. Right. We've discussed the concept of clockwise and anti-clockwise moments in our previous example. Okay. I'll leave a link to that video in the video description. All right. So you can know or you can learn how to identify which of them is clockwise and which is anti-clockwise in the video description. All right, so let's get this done. So how do we solve this? Let's start with P, all right? We said the idea is simply take the force downwards towards A. So P is coming down, take this downwards towards A like this, all right? So if you look at this moment here, this one here is moving against the hand of a clock. So it becomes an anti-clockwise moment. So it means that P is anti-clockwise, all right? Gives you an anti-clockwise moment. Let's look at 70 sine 25. This is going up. So I'll go upwards, trace this, and bring it towards P or towards A, as you can see here. This is going in the same direction as the hands of a clock. So it's called a clockwise, or it will give a clockwise moment. So this would give a clockwise moment. So this one here, I'll call this C clockwise. Okay, let's come over to 50. Trace 50 towards A. Trace 50 towards A. 50 goes upwards. I'm having upwards like this towards A. That's like this. So see the hands of this time. It's going this way here, which means it is anti-clockwise because it is going against the hands of a clock or of yeah of a clock this is anti-clockwise a let's look at 20 sign 30 20 sign 30 is going downwards that's downwards towards a like this right that's this movement here and this movement here is the same thing as the motion of the hands of a clock so this becomes a clockwise movement all right so in essence we have um two clockwise moments, 70 sine 25 and 20 sine 30. We also have two anti-clockwise moments, that's 50 Newton and the one from P. All right, so having said this, so taking clockwise moments, we have that sum, sum of clockwise moments, sum of clockwise moments is equal to sum of anti-clockwise moments so anti-clockwise moments all right for clockwise moments let's start with the first one there the first one here let's start with this one here 17 sine 25 so this becomes i have 70 sine 25 this is the force all right Let's get distance. What's, what is the distance from 70 sine 25 to A? That means I'm looking for this distance from here, this point here, up to A. That's um, this distance. Yes. So what's, what's this distance here? If I look at this here, we can see that clearly that from, to get this distance now, you can see that from this point, if I look at this, from this point here, up to the very, ex, the very extreme here is 5 meters, which is what I have here. All right. So I have that as 5 meters. It means that from this one here, um, from this length here to the very end here, it's about 5 meters. So the total distance from this point here to the end here is about 5 meters in total, as we can see down here. Now, if this is true, you now told us that from here to this here, this small point here, the distance here is actually like 1 meters. So if from here to here is 1 meter, what will be the remaining distance to complete 5 meters? The answer will be what there? 4 meters. Because this 4 here plus this 1 here gives you your total 5. So it means that the distance of the 7 Newton force is actually 4 meters. Alright, so let's take that one down. We'll take it down that distance of the 7 Newton force is actually 4 meters. So from here to here is about 4 meters. Okay, that's um for the 70 sine 25 Newton. Okay, so I have this as this times 4. This for clockwise. Let's look at the next clockwise here, which is about 20 sine 30. So it's clear from the diagram that from this point here, 20 sine 30 from this one here, up to A, we can see the distance here. 
and is the value he has given us what three meters so we don't have to stress about finding that it's about three meters so it becomes 20 sine 30 20 sine 30 times 3 so plus plus 20 sine 30 that's your force times the distance we got as 3 all right so it's equal to let's get for anti-clockwise moments okay let's start with uh which of them p first let's start with p what is the distance from p to a we're looking for this distance here from p to a that's this distance what would it be how do we get this distance well it's simple you can see clearly that from here from this point here this one here to the very end here is about five meters in total and we can also see that from this point here from the extreme end one to this point here is simply one plus two all right so that gives you three meters so what that means is that from here to here is about five meters in total meanwhile from here to this point here is actually three meters so what will be left to complete five the answer is what's there two meters all right so it means that the distance of p is actually two meters okay so we have this as two meters two is simply this total length here which is five which you have here five minus two here plus one here that gives you three so five minus three gives you two meters so the distance of p is two meters so plus force p times two meters plus your final anti-clockwise it's now the 50 newton which is this one here so what is distance from 50 newton to point a we're looking at the distance this one here all right from 50 newton to a how do we get that distance first things first we have that from a to this very this very point here we can see that we have three meters here as you can see below there so we need this small distance here to complete our figure so distance from 50 to a becomes three meters plus this small space here how do we get this small space here that should be simple we can see that from here to here is about 2.5 so from this point here to the very extreme here is about 2.5 meanwhile from here to here is about 1.5 meters as we can see below here so what does, does that mean it means that for us to get the small distance which is um this part here it becomes this let's call this x so x plus 1.5 will give us a total 2.5 so what plus 1.5 will give you 2.5 so x plus 1.5 is equal to 2.5 x will be equal to 2.5 minus 1.5 and that's equal to one so it means this small distance is actually one meters so in totality the distance from 50 newton to a is one meter plus three meters and that's equal to four meters so it becomes 50 newton times four meters all right so with this i've gotten my distances all right so let's punch this what do we have let's punch this what do we have this will be equal to i'll pick up my calculator and the first now punch there is 70 sine 25 times 4. So the punch that what do you have there? 70 sine 25. This times 4. You have your answer here as 118.33 plus. Next up you have 20 sine 30 times 3 you have the answer there as 30 is equal to next up we have 2 times p that, be, that becomes 2p plus you now have your next one there's 50 times 4 and that's about 200 so you have 200 all right so let's get this done here so how do you solve this question here um from this here from this here, I will have this as 118. So I have 118.33 plus 30, and that's about 148.33. It's equal to 2p plus 200. Now move 200 over here. Would we'll have an answer here as would we'll have this as 148. 
point three three minus two hundred it's equal to two p so we have this one four one four eight minus three three minus one four eight point three three minus two hundred and that's about minus you have a negative answer that's minus fifty one point six seven it's equal to two p to get the value of p divide this by two divide this by two so from here two cancels two we'll have that p it's equal to minus fifty one point six seven all over two all right if i have fifty one point two seven point six seven please fifty one point six seven divided by two your answer is minus twenty five so this is minus twenty five point eight four newton of course p was a force in newton now the question will now be why is p negative why do we have a negative force what does that mean now a negative force means that p should not be pointing downwards that's what this means so if you look at this one here p was pointing downwards here so what this is saying is that if i take p downwards you will not it will not be in equilibrium all right it's not being equi equilibrium so the negative signifies that the direction of p should be upward instead so p should rather be what's there upwards so not downwards all right so that means the um, direction for p should rather be this upwards and the value there should be about 25.84 newton upwards and not downwards that's what the negative means okay so in essence the value of p is actually equal to 25.84 newton you now add this as upwards so not down it should be pointing downwards you point upwards all right so this is basically this is how uh, we solve this question okay all right there's another tactic task question that i would solve but it will be only available to the first year students okay let me show you the question all right so this one here so that's this this class here okay so you have principal moments four right so this will be exclusively for my channel members those in first year undergraduate okay so to get access to this video simply join my channel membership and select the first year undergraduates or first year students okay all right so check the first year students you see um this video all right i'll leave a link to join the first year students or first year undergraduates in the video description all right so check video description you see the link to join the first year undergraduates membership group okay all right so if you enjoyed this video as usual leave the like button okay so like this video okay hit the like button like this video leave a comment tell us if you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you're here to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever we upload the new content and finally share this video to your friends so that they can also learn thank you and see you in our next class